For a while I've wanted to build a green laser in a smaller form factor than this regular one, uh, but this is hard to do because normally the green lasers are 532 nanometer uh, DPSS lasers, so the optics uh, can't really get much smaller than this. However, they recently come out with some uh, direct solid state laser diodes that are green in a slightly different wavelength. And this allows the whole thing to be much smaller, so I was able to build a green laser pointer into this keychain format flashlight, the Nightcore tube. Here's how I built it. So the plan is to make a rechargeable laser with a LTC4054 lithium ion battery, a LM317 constant current driver for the laser, and we also need a boost converter in order to get the voltage the diode needs. And I'll control it all with a microcontroller. So begin by collecting all the parts. And we'll start with the laser diode. I'm putting the diode into one of these cheap red laser modules in order to get the smallest uh, optics footprint that we can manage to get the collimated beam. Slight modification to that housing will let this standard laser diode fit into it and get the beam collimated and then I'll mount it in there with epoxy. Moving on to the host, this is a Nightcore tube, a rechargeable keychain flashlight. The only part that I'm actually going to use is the mechanical parts and the housing because uh, I need a smaller battery than what comes in it. So with a little trimming of the button cover, I can fit all of the uh, primary parts into here with the laser fully enclosed in the housing so it's protected. And I temporarily mount everything with super glue which is just a temporary fixation before the epoxy goes on. The switch mounts on top of the uh, laser diode optics, and then I also prepare the USB jack. Once those three uh, primary components are in there, I can begin epoxying everything into place so it's mounted very firmly. Moving on to the electronics for this, I'm going to use this 80 milliamp hour lithium ion cell and I'm going to remove the protection circuit from it uh, just for mechanical reasons. The protection circuit will still be used, but I found that this type of cell can be mounted sideways into the tube body uh, if I remove the protection and fold the tabs over. And that gives me a lot more room for the electronics in front of it. So later on I'll add the protection circuit back in just mounted in a physically different location. The electronics for the laser driver is an LM317 constant current supply and I'm shooting for 50 milliamps which gives me a 25 ohm resistor. Mounting that on the 317 which is in a SOIC 8 package and then I can put that next to the laser diode optics assembly up front. And also an N-channel MOSFET on top of that will allow me to turn the laser on and off and also dim it via PWM. The laser needs about 7 volts to operate with the driver on there, so we need a boost converter. And I'm, that's the MT3608, which I'm pulling from a cheap eBay module. And I'll also take the diode and a in input capacitor from that module. The inductor on it is too large, so I pulled a smaller 4.7 microhenry inductor from something else. And then I'll airwire the MT3608 circuit just to produce the smallest physical footprint possible. That gets mounted in the body uh, behind the 317 constant current driver, and then everything is wired in. Most of the wiring is done with 34 gauge enameled magnet wire for signals, and then power conductors are 30 gauge Kynar wire. Next is the LTC4054 charging circuit which can be built right on top of the USB jack since there's enough height to fit it in there. That needs to be wired into the USB jack and the battery and needs a couple of support components, a current setting resistor, a red LED to indicate charging, current limiting resistor for the LED. Finally, I'll add the microcontroller, which is a PIC12F617 on a custom breakout board that includes a decoupling cap and an indicator LED. And then everything gets wired in. At this point, I'm wiring it without the battery connected so that I can test the full system before it's energized. The connections to the microcontroller include the switch as an input, 
indicator LED, control of the three, MT3608 enable pin, PWM to the MOSFET, and um, then the charger is not connected to the microcontroller, it's just standalone. After everything is wired, I program the chip and then do a final test before connecting the battery. Here you can see the indicator blinking out battery voltage. Now that everything's working, I'll connect the battery and we can do a final functional test, including charging. Now that everything works, we can reassemble including the keychain rings with a small magnet behind them which allows it to hang from steel objects. And there's the completed laser. So let's talk a little bit about the firmware. The primary thing that this implements is uh, reducing the power levels normally, which you can start to see if you sweep it around very quickly. You can see that this is actually pulsed. Uh, this was intended to uh, save the battery, but also make it a little bit safer. Now, I assume that eye damage, uh, the mechanism for eye damage is based on heating, as most things that lasers can damage are. So. Under that assumption, I think that a pulsed laser at a fairly high frequency, in this case 2 kilohertz, should be safer for the eyes, but I am not an expert on that. Anyway, uh, this is pulsed at a, a lower uh, duty cycle normally, and you can change the power level with um, some uh, button sequences. So normally this acts like a regular laser pointer where it's just momentary only, but if you do some special sequences, the power level will change. So now I'm in the adjustment mode and it's ramping up and down and you can see the green indicator inside the body there blinking when I get to the maximum and minimum power levels. And I can stop where I want and that is saved. However, after an hour of inactivity it will go back to the safe level, uh, which I assume is about three to five milliwatts in this case. The other thing the firmware implements is a lockout, so I can triple click and the light indicates that it is now locked out and button presses don't do anything and a triple click again will unlock it. The last thing this does is adds a battery check, so after a, a quick click it will blink out the battery voltage. Three point 3.8 volts and there's a hold off on that so it's not blinking constantly it's only on the first click after a while of not displaying battery voltage